So we're going to look at three different problems involving buoyant forces and using Archimedes' principle to solve for a variety of things. First one is pretty simple. If we have a piece of lead floating in mercury, and yes, mercury is so dense that you can even float a piece of lead in it, um, but we're not going to play with these things. They're both kind of dangerous. So we want to know what percentage <clears throat> or what fraction of the piece of lead is under the mercury and what percentage is above the mercury. So here's our chunk of mercury, sorry, our chunk of lead, and then it's floating in some mercury like so. And we want to know what percentage is below the level of the mercury. So we had this uh, nice useful equation that we derived in the last video that says the volume displaced, which is the amount that's under the mercury, divided by the volume of the object is equal to the ratio of the density of the object to the density of the fluid. So basically what the question is asking for is what fraction is submerged. Well, that's what this ratio here is already telling us because it's submerged divided by total volume. So this is the fraction submerged. So all we have to do is plug in numbers for our densities here. So we've got 11,300. And we can just go ahead and chop off the zeros on both of those divided by 136. And we are going to get 0.83088 or approximately 83.1% will be submerged. So my picture here was not drawn to scale. 83% um, would be under, and then the rest would be sticking out of the top. All right, next problem. <clears throat> Piece of metal has a mass of 10.5 kilograms out of the water. You put it in the water and you weigh it then, and it seems like it has less mass because it seems like it has less weight. And from that, we want to find the density of the metal. So we have two different equations to find the buoyant force, and we're gonna have to use both of them here. So one of them is the difference, one of the equations, is the difference between the weight in the water and out of the water, which is just these two things times 9.8, right? And the other equation for buoyant force is the density of the fluid times the volume displaced times g. And now uh, this, uh, this object is submerged, so <clears throat> oh, I didn't mean to underline that part. It's submerged, so that means the volume displaced is equal to the volume of the object. We're trying to find density of the object, and so that is the mass of the object, the actual mass when it's out of the water, so we already have that, that's the 10.5, divided by the volume of the object. So as I already mentioned, this uh, volume displaced is equal to the volume of the object when it's submerged. So we're going to use these equations here. We're going to set them equal to each other because they both give us buoyant force. So we're going to have weight out of the water minus weight in the water equals density of the fluid times the volume. I'm just going to go ahead and call it the volume of the object because uh, that's what we're looking for, times g. Now I mentioned earlier you can break this up into m times g minus m prime times g. And if we factor out the g, then we get m minus m prime quantity times g. And that's going to allow us to get rid of gravity. So this answer does not depend on what planet you're on. Good to know. You can use this when visiting Mars. We're trying to solve for the, uh, the volume of the object. So that's going to be the difference in the masses, or the difference between the mass and the apparent mass, divided by the density of the fluid, which in this case is water. And you can go ahead and plug this in here and solve for plug in numbers all at once, but I'll go ahead and find this intermediate answer here. So we've got 10.5 kilograms out of the water, which is the actual mass, 8.84 kilograms, that's not an 8, there we go in the water, and then we divide by the density of the fluid, which in this case is just water, so that's going to be a thousand. 
So we get a volume, pretty small, 0 0.00166 cubic meters. Now we can come back up here to our density equation. We've got the mass, so 10.5, because that's the actual mass, divided by this volume that we found. And that gives us a density of 6,325 kilograms per cubic meter. And there you have it. A little bit of work to, to get through this, but um, not too bad. All right, last one here. Now, this is going to help you quite a bit when we actually launch our hot air balloons, so you might want to take a few notes. This will come in handy. And this is going to be several steps to this problem. This one's longer, so uh, you might want to go get a snack or something. All right, air inside a hot air balloon has a density of 0.98. The ambient air has a density of 1.29, so when you heat it up, the air spreads out a bit and gets less dense. The balloon has a radius of 12 meters, so this is an actual full-size hot air balloon, and we are going to treat it as a sphere instead of a teardrop-shaped thing. And the material is making up the balloon, so this is the, the cloth of the balloon itself, as well as the basket hanging below it and whatnot. That has a total mass of 235 kilograms, and we are going to find the acceleration of the balloon. So to find acceleration, we're going to use net force equals ma. And to find the net force, the forces acting on this balloon are the buoyant force up minus gravity down. Okay, so we've got that worked out. Now let's jump over here and do some uh, other calculations to find the buoyant force. The buoyant force is going to be, uh, we don't know the weight in the air and out of the air, so we have to use uh, rho of the fluid times the volume displaced, which is the, the balloon is completely submerged in the air, so to speak, so this is just the volume of the balloon, uh, times g. So the density here of the fluid that it's in, so that's the ambient air, it's going to be 1.29. The volume displaced, it's a 12 meter uh, radius sphere, and the, air, or the volume of a sphere is 4 thirds pi r cubed, so we're going to have 4 thirds pi times 12 cubed, and then we're going to multiply that puppy by 9.8. Throw all that in your calculator and you get a whopping 91,505.7 newtons of buoyant force. All right, so we'll plug that in here, uh, 91505.7. Then we need to subtract off the gravitational force. I'm going to find that over here as well. It's not as easy as it looks. It's not just 235 times 9.8 because the air inside the balloon will also be moving up with it and uh, even though it's not very dense because there's so much of it, it actually has a significant amount of mass. So the gravitational force is going to be the <clears throat> mass of the hot air plus the 235 kilograms of the material of the balloon and the basket, all of that times 9.8. Now to find the mass of the hot air, we can use uh, density equals mass over volume, so mass equals density times volume, so this is the density of the hot air now, times the volume of the balloon, plus 235, all of that times 9.8. The density of the hot air is given, so that's 0.98. The volume of the balloon is the same factor here, so 4 thirds pi times 12 cubed plus 235, all of that times 9.8. Throw that whole thing into your calculator and you get 71,819. So that's good news. It's less than our buoyant force because that was 91,000. So our balloon will float. It will accelerate upward. So we can come over here, minus 
71819. So this right here is our net force, the buoyant force minus gravitational force. We could solve for that if we were asked to, but we don't need to. Uh, then we want to find acceleration, so this is equal to mass times acceleration. I'm going to just divide by mass like this. Okay, so the net force here works out to be 19,686.7. Again, we need the whole mass of the balloon and the air, so that's this whole factor in here uh, without the 9.8. So that is going to be this number here, 0.98 times 4 thirds pi times 12 cubed, uh, comes out to be about 7,093, and a little, some change, plus the 235 kilograms for the rest. So actually that air was significantly more massive than, than the rest of the balloon. So we have all of that equal to acceleration, and finally we get our acceleration of 2.669 uh, if we round meters per second squared. So there you have it, a nice brisk upward acceleration for our hot air balloon. All right, see you next time.